right, and here we are on the map, Cloud Kingdom. And in the upper right-hand corner, we have our red Protoss player from Incredible Miracle. It is Yong Hua. He's up 1-0 <laughs> over his opponent. Down here at the bottom left-hand corner, our purple Protoss player, Vampire. Oh, Vampire. So I love me some mirror matchups, man, but PvP is one of those matchups that I just watch, and I, just, I want the assimilators to be ready to go when we start the match. Like, just have the gases <laughs> down, and then we just cast from there. Like, get past the first three to four minutes, because uh, it, it just it's really not that big of a difference in builds. People have just really figured out how to play safe opening builds, and, and then from there they fall up into where it's just micro that wins games, not the actual build orders. That, this is an interesting place to put a pylon, though, to start the game. Um, more often than not, you're either going to put it very close to your nexus in PvP, just because there's no real reason to wall or anything along those Save lines. minerals. Yeah, exactly. So you just want to try and be as economic as possible, get an extra return it may only save you five minerals, but you know what? It's a small advantage. But this is a weird position because it's just the same as if he had ducked his probe out to say here and put it down, which is where you would see it uh, in the days of yore in uh, PvP. But uh, what is he going to hide there? Let's find out. Or maybe it's just to uh, mind games his opponent a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it is very curious. Really quickly in the top left or top right corner, we do have Young with there um, right in front of you guys. But uh, something to note is we didn't have scouting last game, and uh, Vampire mm -hmm. could be taking that into effect, and Yangwa. Is he going to go for... Okay. I was just checking for boxies. <laughs> okay, I was like, wait a minute. What, what is this? I've <laughs> never seen this in my life, uh, except for people who die. Uh, but we do have the gateway going down right away uh, for Vampire, but there's a lot of great tech options he can go for. He can hide some um, Twilight Council, Dark Templar, Dark Shrine. I think he wants back there in the back left corner if he wants to go that route. So uh, we'll see if he goes for it. It could just be just... You have to throw off a scout if a scout comes in, but uh, Yangwood not scouting once again. Gas timings are actually exactly the same that they were last time, too. Yonghua going for an earlier first gas, a later second gas, but still before Cybernetic score. Uh, Vampire putting both of his down at the same time before the first gas is uh, um, is finished for Yonghua. Well, here we go. We're about to have some information. Oh, we have a Cybernetic score. <laughs> I'm shocked. Oh, my God. A Cybernetic score next. I was expecting five gateways to go down, but... Shows how much I know about PvP. Uh, do we have two two? Okay, so we have two two on those. We have uh, two two here. So yeah, this is just this is just a standard now. Um, I yeah. mean, as Tasels would say in the GSL, if you want to be a good Protoss player, yeah, go for this build. Yes, but um, it is important to note that Yonghua's already switched up what he's done last time. If you yeah. remember, he put uh, three probes on his gas very, very quickly after he had finished those up. This time, not deciding to take that approach. So he's obviously got a different build in mind. We'll see what it ends up being soon. Not going to be that uh, super fast uh, uh, Colossus builder, so I would assume. Yeah. Scouting information does come from Yonghua. He has scouted into his opponent's base, so he does uh, look around, sees the gas timing, sees the offset pylon, which uh, may keep him a little bit more interested here. He'll poke around try and keep that probe alive just a tad bit longer. Uh, we'll probably bring it out into the third and then hide it and then bring it back in to yeah. where you see most of the time. Uh, oh my gosh, he's going to let it sit there and do some damage. There we go. <laughs> I forgot their APM's way faster than mine. My probe would have died. Uh, <laughs> but we'll see what he's going to follow up and do. Throwing straight into a robo, so one gate robo. Uh, this is very similar to the Billy Dilesky. Yes, except, it is. Except a little bit later on the gases, as you mentioned. Exactly. He's actually uh, added one more probe to his gas. There we go. Now he's finally at 3-3. Three and three. So we'll see what he ends up turning this into. Could just be that one gate robo expand, though, that some players have been doing. Get an immortal, stay nice and safe. Wow. Um, but look, look at Vampire. Okay, so we the whole pylon thing threw us off. What was he going for? Sure. And that's to throw off his opponent as well, make it look like some kind of one base play might be happening, and then he just goes for a straight up expansion. Yeah, it, it, it's all a thought process here. Uh, the pro coming in, scouting for Yongwo, goes, okay, what's going on here? Something fishy could happen. He gets that robo down, gets a little bit safer, falls up into a couple more uh, gateways as well, while Vampire just goes for a straight expansion. Just so smart from him. It, it all comes down to it not being scattered, though. We can't have anything else pop in very soon. I'm very happy, though, that Vampire decided not to give up the, the more defensive play, the more economic play. A lot of players will get rattled after the first mm -hmm. game. Ah, what's going to hit me? I'm going to throw down an extra gateway or something like that before I expand, just to make sure that I'm going to stay a little bit safer. Uh, Vampire's not deterred, though. He knows he's got a strong build, and he's going to try and, uh, and wait this out. Now, of course, it is going to be a while before he's able to take advantage of these, and there is a potential for Yonghui to get back in and do some more damage. And Did in fact, he is actually going for four gate robo once again. Yeah, the four gate on the way. So uh, we do have in the bottom right corner a pylon already on the way. I believe there's one at the fourth of uh, Vampire as well. Yes, there is. So aggression will be coming. And this is really, 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 really hard for Vampire to hold. Um, Young was going to have so much production available to him. Two gateways are finishing up for Vampire, so he will have some uh, units to be able to 
pop out very soon, but again, it all comes down to control, and he has to have a little bit of damage on that neck because he can't engage right away. And Yonghua is, uh, looks like uh, he's sending a probe down here. Are we going to see an expansion afterwards uh, here in just a second? Just one round of aggression to try and poke in and do some damage. Could very well be the case. There is an immortal up for Vampire, though, and that is going to make very quick work of Stalkers, so Vampire um, defending well there, and Yonghua smartly pulling back out. Oh, gifting him! A sentry, though, is not the best idea. Oh, it's because he's worried about this warp on onto the high ground. Oh, yep, that'll happen. Zell straight into the main right away, and uh, probes are getting a little bit on the damage side. And that explains the follow-up in the Nexus here. It looks like it will be cleaned up. And in a second, we'll check the warp and kill for you guys. Nice force build there, by the way. Slamming that Zell against the mineral field. And not allow any more probes to die. Three bird killed off. So, uh, actually, I think Vampire's in a little bit on the head side. But with the units popping in, you need to be careful. Don't want to lose that Immortal. It's really pivotal for defense. Okay, so... Yonghua ends up doing a little bit of damage there. I don't think enough to justify what he's put into that, yeah, the amount know. that he's delayed his expansion, and that pr uh, that pylon was killed from the high grounds, so and now these uh, these units have to book it. Yeah, and especially with him going for four gateways as well, um, it, it's just not worth it at all for him falling up into an expansion. And it looks like we're going to have this pylon cleaned up as well. Vampire feeling very uh, cocky at the moment, and rightfully so. He held that pretty nicely and didn't take that much damage. Falls up into a war prism as well. He has a counterattack available, and now he forces Yonghua to either create a lot of units or overprobe, and then he just dies, uh, which means that expansion becomes nullified. This is a really smart play for Vampire if he keeps the aggression up. Okay, and I think he will, uh, especially with the intention to build that uh, that war prism. He could have just as easily made an, an observer or uh, another mortal and stayed safe and played back at home because he knows he has an advantage. But nope, he is going for it. Total worker count uh, just 24. I will point out for Vampires, so he has actually cut uh, quite a few workers. So the economic advantage with this new expansion is actually Yonghua. So we're in kind of a reverse situation. Situation. If he can hold this, he is actually going to be significantly ahead. Yeah, after Vampire held that damage that was done to him, he just immediately thought, I'm not going to make any more probes here, I'm just going to get aggressive right away, because my opponent is obviously going to expand behind this. Uh, the thing is, Yangwa has a pretty good defense available for him. I'm going to lose those zealots, and those zealots are going to be taking some damage. If they catch some sentries, that'd be great, but it will not be happening. Nope. And yeah, now Yangwa is in a really good position. Oh, but here come the drops. Yeah, I can't that worker's in there. Why? Well, not sure what that was all about. He does drop on top of the units, but uh, Vampire, unfortunately, gifting 200 minerals to his opponent there and can't reinforce directly on top of his opponent, which is exactly what he wanted to do. Nice warp in position here for these stalkers on the high ground. They're not being seen by Vampire's Immortals, so they can just pick away at this all day long, and now the Immortals for Yonghua are just that much more powerful. Wow, Vampire just not playing as well as he normally does in a PvP, and Yonghua took full advantage of here. Uh, and We'll be able to force a retreat, and it looks like we will have Vampire retreating and going to go ahead and start probing up. 26 to 24, he did get a couple of trades there, so now we're in a bit of an equal situation, but throwing that War Prism away really hurt him. And he's coming back in, too. I mean, this is so aggressive out of him. The the uh, Hardened Shields are coming back slowly but surely on these Immortals, but uh, just a couple of shots from Stalkers will be right back down, and these Immortals will be vulnerable again. Yeah, yeah, with the, f the two Zealots popping in, it becomes, uh, do I want to engage in this if I can get those Zealots on the Stalkers? Yeah, we're feeling really good here, but uh, it forces your opponent to micro, and potentially you could also miss a couple of pros being created. Yongle could accidentally not queue a couple up. Uh, but Young has just been on top of the defense. He's been awesome at pulling his stalkers back, landing at force fields as well, just constantly separating those units from him. It's a, go ahead. Oh no, I wasn't going to say. Oh, anything. I was going to say uh, it looks like the uh, just it's easier to be aggressive than it is to be defensive. Mm -hmm. um, and Vampire just taking full advantage of that. Yeah, Vampire's actually running out with his third Immortal, too, so he wants to continue on the pressure here. His opponent has not made any more Immortals himself. The Heart and Shields are now completely back, and it's going to make these Immortals just that much stronger. Uh, Vampire's doing a little bit better job of trying to get in and do some damage this time, but the Immortals still just sitting away, picking away, grabbing kills one after another after another, and now uh, Yonghua's getting directly on top of a couple of those units. But as we have three Immortals now, it looks like that may finally be enough to start pulling probes off the line. Keeping those Immortal lives and constantly getting Zealous mixed in is starting to really win down uh, Yangwa, and suddenly it looks like the uh, aggression that we were kind of doubting is working out really well here for Vampire. Needs to not lose the Immortals. It's really what's been helping out for him here. It's constantly been retaining them, and yeah. look at that again. The Zelts get in right in front, and the Immortals are able to keep doing damage. How many Immortals does... <laughs> or how many kills? 11 kills, and gosh, yeah. they've been doing so much damage. 11 kills, 1 kill, 15 kills, so these Immortals have basically been just trading back and forth the entire game, and it looks like uh, after what I will admit has been a pretty sloppy game so far, so it seems uh, Vampire is finally going to get that critical advantage he needs and tie it up one to one. He has these Immortals and Stalkers too as well. They're just going down really quickly, just constantly keeping those hardened shields available. GG from Yangwa, Vampire tying it up. All right.
Well, a uh, very interesting game there. Like we said, it was um, not characteristic of these two guys. They're usually a little bit cleaner, so... Yeah, yeah, I, way crisper. Yeah, don't mean to rag on them too much. It was just there was a couple of mistakes on, uh, on either side. But in the end, that sends us to a game number three. Well, guys, I'm ready for game number three. It's going to be the ace match between our players. Whoever does win this will be going to the grand finals to play against our other semifinalist that does pop out of the other two matches, or the other match after we jump right. into this. So let's go ahead and hop into a commercial. We'll be right back.